Welcome to Uncle's Channel. Thanks for watching today, and let's talk about Final Fantasy 16 because there's a lot of hate for this game, and I just don't get it. Because I've been playing through the game, and like I absolutely love the game. I'm probably like 60% or so of the way through, and like I mean, it's a great storyline, fun combat, complex characters, just a beautiful setting and scenery. Uh, to me, it's just like really well done. And talk about the soundtrack. Oh my gosh, like the soundtrack. Perfection. Like I just finished up the uh, fire and ice chapter where there's like a sanctuary inside the mountain or volcano and like oh my gosh like it was like literal perfection in gaming as far as like matching atmosphere with soundtrack and overall story like I'm telling you like the game is really something. However, like I said, there's a small portion of people out there who really, really don't like this game, and they're also very vocal about their dislike for the game. You can go on Metacritic and you can see all the review bombing taking place on there. You can go on YouTube and you can watch like entire video essays of why the game is just such garbage and such trash, and, uh, and no one should ever play such a horrible, horrible game. However, like, why the hate? Now, a line I see on the internet a lot is just simply the title, Not a Final Fantasy Game. And even though the word Final Fantasy isn't a title, I'm not dumb enough to not actually know what they're talking about. They mean they don't think it's like the old Final Fantasy games that they enjoy so much. They hate the combat, they hate the cutscenes, they hate the storyline, they hate the skill system, they hate the side quest, and honestly, it seems like they hate everything about the game. And I'm not saying that you have to love it as much as me, but honestly, do they really think everything in the game is just absolute terrible? I can understand when you love a series and the entry feels like a little bit of a departure. However, does that make the game automatically bad? Like when Legend of Zelda changed for uh, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, I'll admit, like I missed the old Zelda style, I even talked about it in a video on the channel, but I could still acknowledge they were really great games in their own right, they just simply didn't bring back the same feelings for me. They weren't horrible games. But some of these Final Fantasy fans have taken it upon themselves to say that no one should enjoy this game and this is absolutely the wrong direction for the series to go in. However, it's not really that much of a departure that they're talking about, especially when you look at like uh, scenery and story and things like that. First off, the medieval setting is more of a return to form for the series than anything. I mean, look at the very first game from the 1980s. The settings of that game and this game are far more similar to each other than like say 7 is to either one of them. And speaking of the setting, there are some people who are claiming that they've copied Game of Thrones with the setting and the storyline because it deals with these crazed political leaders back in the medieval times trying to take over the world and, you know, ruin its resources. However, once again though, this is just as much in common with the first entries in the series as it is with Game of Thrones. I mean, like, the second game literally had, like, corrupt political leaders going after the citizens. And I'll admit I've not played all the Final Fantasy games, but it's at least the concept in a lot of them. But even if you did see some comparisons between Game of Thrones and Final Fantasy, does that mean it automatically has to suck? Like, I like Batman and I like Spider-Man. But they are both two genius superheroes who lost their parents at an early age, who go on to fight crime in the city, and battle against giant reptiles, and bats, and cat ladies, and bird people, and morphing soil mutants of sorts. I mean, you get the point here. Just because something is similar does not mean that you cannot like and enjoy both of them. So comparing it to Game of Thrones, I don't really see what the problem is there, especially since Final Fantasy was originally rooted in this type of setting. Now another thing that's brought up about this game a lot that people don't like are the side quests. The side quests in this game are deemed fetch quest, and uh, that is evidently the worst thing a game can possibly be in the year 2023. And I don't actually disagree that some of the side quests fall into the camp of fetch quest. However, if you're actually following the storyline of the game, then these side quests like enrich the lore and emotional impact of the game significantly. Like take the side quest of all bark and the side quest of play things in the first uh, quarter of the game or the first uh, third of the game. Now true, these are very short quests and they have literally like no long-term play mechanics. However, the emotional impact of the stories of the bears and how they're treated in society is completely heartbreaking and some of the most emotional parts of the entire game, at least thus far. Like I said, I've not completed the entire story, but I'm like 60-ish percent done at this point. And while I won't say that all the side quests are the same caliber as the two that I just mentioned, a great number of them do carry pretty good weight for the story. Could they have made them a little bit more complex? Yes, but I feel like the developers wanted to just allow more insight quickly into the storyline and this was the best way to get it done. The further you go into the game though, the deeper the side quests do get and you get more hunting missions and you get more unique beasts and more items to find out as well. And so like I feel like the side quests are there, it's just gonna take gamers more time to get into it and some gamers aren't giving the game enough time to develop and also the earlier ones in the game focus more on story 
and they're not necessarily as invested in the story as some other people. And so I think the idea of criticizing the side quest so much is a little bit unfounded, at least in my opinion. Now, the next issue that people bring up a lot, and it's a big one for them, is the combat in the game. They say that the combat for this game is not Final Fantasy combat. Now, if you're strictly speaking of like the uh, NES and SNES up to like early PS2 days, then yes, this is not the same type of combat as original Final Fantasy games. However, that's like two decades ago <laughs> since the game has changed its combat system. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend I've played every Final Fantasy game and know all about all the different combats that have brought about, but I mean like just take the last one that came out, like Final Fantasy 15, very action-based combat. The Final Fantasy 7 remake, very action-based combat. Even if you go back to like the original ones, they were mixing like things up, you know, if the combat, even though it was turn-based, they're mixing it up along the way. And so to say this is not combat that is in line with the rest of the Final Fantasies, uh, you know, I just don't necessarily agree with that because Final Fantasy has always sort of mixed its combat up and it's been going in this particular direction for over a decade at this point. But the combat is very quick, it's very smooth, and to me it offers a ton of variety within the different skill trees that you can set up. However, another complaint that comes up within the combat isn't just a departure of, you know, the turn-based, it's also that the idea that you can just press square and that's the entire combat. Just press the square button over and over and over. And to this I say yes and no. Yes, you can set up in your inventory to allow some things to be done automatically, and you can press square and get through the majority of the game. However, you do not have to do that. You do not have to equip the amulets at the beginning of the game to allow some of this automation to take place. If you want more control, and actually the ability to be even more powerful as the game goes on, unequip these items and you have way more control. You get to control your basic moves, your special moves, your distance moves, your magic moves. I mean, the combat system is really well done. And I think some people are not realizing that you can do a lot of this manually, which allows for a much more rich experience if you want to go in that direction. And so to me, this is like a win-win scenario because there's many players who just simply want to journey through Final Fantasy just for the story because the stories are great in these games and they would prefer to have that experience of the fun and flash without all of the difficulty that goes along with it. And so to me, you can go either direction you want to on this game and if you want to just push square, yes, you can go that direction. But there's so much more to the combat, and I think it speaks a lot to the developers that they've developed a combat system for both type of players. But speaking strictly to the uh, departure of combat from older Final Fantasy games, there is one thing this game tends to do a little bit different, and that's the idea that they're doing away with a party system. As in, like, you don't have multiple members that you could control, level up, you really just simply focus on Clive, and that's pretty much it. Yes, you do have control over your pet with different commands, but that can be automated if you want, but the vast majority of the game, you're just simply playing as Clive. Now, like I said, this is a departure from the core series of having your rotating party to play with. However, I do personally like it a lot. I like a tight character focused story, and I feel like playing through the lens of Clyde provides exactly that. But like I said with the story earlier, just because it's not how you remember the old games, it does not make this new game bad in and of itself. But let's transition out of combat for a second and let's talk about the cutscenes. Now there are a ton of cutscenes in this game, and to some people, that tends to be the end of the world. However, like Final Fantasy has always had fantastic stories, and this is one of the most in-depth stories that I've seen in the game, not just Final Fantasy, but just in general, and so I think having this many cutscenes is somewhat of a trade-off. Now, judging from the comments that I've read through, you would think that the whole game is just one giant cutscene, and that's obviously not the case. This is still a video game, and not a movie. It has some of the most epic looking battles I've ever seen in gaming, and you get to play through all of that. The paths between the towns, in the towns that you get to explore, plenty of smaller monsters to battle against, plenty of monsters to hunt out from the hunt board, and even so much to explore that you get a chocobo to ride on to explore it. I mean, the world is huge, and there is so much to go through, and I feel like the further you get into the game, the more opportunities you do have to actually explore and sort of make your own adventure out of it. And so there is so much content in this game that's not just cutscene. And it's a really fantastic experience, but at the same time, if you're just simply following the basic story for the game, you are gonna have a ton of cutscenes. However, like I said, if you want a story of this caliber, it's almost expected to have this many cutscenes inside the game. And finally, let's talk about the last big complaint about the game, which is the linearity of the game. Yes, the game is linear. However, to me personally, I find this a little bit refreshing. Like we've been going, going through so many open world games lately, that are just expansive to the max. And there's so much to explore, it can get overwhelming. And even in some cases, a little bit on the boring side. And so to finally have a game that like is very story focused, 
gives you the action, gives you the story, gives you the character development. It's almost like a breath of fresh air, at least to me, in the year 2023. And I know this is somewhat of a deeper topic for another day, and I might end up making another video about open world exhaustion, but when I began this game and saw it was going to be a more linear experience instead of just simply a huge open world to travel through, I actually got pretty excited about that because it felt like there's a driving force in the game, an overall uh, story arc that I get to follow through and just have an overall focused experience. But I'll say it again from what I echoed at the beginning. To people who complain about this, it does not necessarily make it a bad game. It's just simply a personal preference on what some people like versus what other people like. And it's not actually a negative of the game itself. Overall, Final Fantasy 16 is at an overwhelmingly positive reception from both audience members as critics alike. However, there is that small internet base out there that has been very vocal of their opinion on how much they absolutely hate the game. And for the most part, I just feel like it's unwarranted. Yes, there are a few aspects of the game that are a departure from certain Final Fantasy games, but as an overall, I feel like it definitely keeps the spirit of Final Fantasy alive and carries on the name very well to me. Personally, I would say it's one of the best games that I've played on the PS5, and I'm really looking forward to finishing the game, and hopefully at one point, they'll put out some DLC for it as well. But what do you all think? Do you think Final Fantasy 16 is a great game that carries on the legacy of the series perfectly? Do you think it's just an okay game that you're sort of enjoying, or do you simply think it's a pile of garbage and just simply does not need to exist? Let me know in the comments down below, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and just go out there, find a great game to play, just simply have a great rest of the day.